chicken pot pie with a homemade, perfectly delicious savory pastry crust right on top. This filling goes together quickly. It has so many layers of flavor. It is finished with this crust that seriously sends it over the top. We're gonna make it all together. We're gonna make the filling. We're gonna make the crust. Yours is gonna look just like this and taste even better. Let's go. Chicken pot pie can be as hard or as easy as you want it to be. We're gonna make this somewhat easier. It's just gonna have a top crust, still a beautiful homemade crust, but we're not gonna do the bottom crust. I don't really like the texture of those. I really think it's much better just to do a wonderful filling, put a top crust on it, and we're gonna start with the meat because that is essential. What we're using is chicken, and I am specifically using chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. The reason I'm using thighs they have more flavor. You can argue all you want, but they do. They have better flavor, it's dark meat, it has just like this delicious quality to it. Now, can you use chicken breast? Of course, I'm not gonna come into your kitchen and tell you not to, but I do think if you have the option and you can find them, the chicken thighs are just gonna give you more flavor. And that works for any time you're gonna use chicken on anything. Thighs have more flavor, they just do. But you can see what I'm doing is doing a nice cube on them. It's nothing like, just kind of a bite-sized cube. This is what it's gonna cook in, and you can see it's just somewhat even pieces, but that's also gonna help so it just cooks evenly. Now I have one hand that's obviously dirty, one hand that I was holding the knife with that's clean. With the clean hand, always think about this with meat, I'm going to take some salt and make sure to season it very well. So I'm gonna do this so it can sit just a couple minutes here with salt and pepper on it, because that's gonna help season it. Now, meat anytime you can, if you can season a little bit beforehand with some salt and kind of work it into it a little bit, move it around, that's gonna help it season the meat internally and help it hold on to its moisture that you want. So anytime you can do this when you're working with any type of meat, that's really gonna make a big difference. So now I'm gonna wash my hand so we can chop the vegetables and get ready to go. I'm melting some butter on the stove. Butter's gonna give us our beginning base flavor that we want. It's also gonna help create a roux later on when we thicken it a little bit. So what I'm doing is just getting my vegetables ready. So we have some onion, of course. That's gonna be that beginning aromatic that gives us that wonderful flavor. Cutting off that little bit of root. And what I'm gonna also do is of course have, to me what are essential when you're doing this, and that is some carrot and some celery. Now I'm doing somewhat bite-sized pieces on all those. The big important thing is somewhat even. You don't have to be perfect with your dice here. Do you just want it to be somewhat even together? So the texture of the overall dish is correct. And that's what we're doing here. But you can see, I do not peel my carrot. I scrub them well if they're organic. I leave those peels on. To me, not only is that good texture and fiber, it has flavor and I don't like to waste it. So what I have here are all my vegetables. What we're gonna do is put them right into the butter so they can just start sauteing a little bit and sweating out before we add that chicken that we seasoned. So we're gonna put them right in here. And always when you're doing it, I like to season as I go. So with those in there, I'm gonna of course add some salt, a little bit of pepper, and let them saute. We're gonna take the chicken over, because as you can see now, the onion has really started to sweat. You can see how it's becoming a little translucent. We don't want the carrots to become soggy or anything yet, but you can see that onion is really starting to turn translucent and just kind of lose some of its moisture. So what we're gonna do is add in the chicken, and we're gonna let this saute till it's fully cooked. So it won't take too long since we kind of already cut it up into pieces. We're just gonna move it around, let it fully cook, then finish up. While that chicken is cooking, which just takes a few minutes, I wanna get the top crust ready, which really honestly is simple. If you don't know how to make pie crust at home, it's super easy. This is my standard pie crust recipe with a little bit of an addition to make it more savory. So we have the flour right in here. We're gonna season it with some salt. Super simple. I'm gonna add some cheese. It's gonna add a little bit of a savory note, a little bit of a different flavor, which I like. So we're gonna do some cheddar right in there. We're also gonna do some Parmesan and a little bit of this thyme right here, just to kind of spice it up. And all you do is toss this together. So you have that flour and all this cheeses and putting that thyme in there. Look how simple that is. Now we're gonna add our butter. So you can see I have cubed butter. It's cold from the fridge. Putting it right in here. And what I first like to do is toss it. Just toss it in those dry ingredients to get all those little pieces of butter coated. That just makes sure they stay somewhat individual. So as we're gonna work them in, it's a little bit quicker. Now, if you wanna use a pastry cutter, you can. I think quick hands are the easiest thing. So what I do is I pick up some flour and butter and I just push it between my thumb and forefingers and push it off. And we're just working it into the flour and it can go pretty quick. Once you get the hang of it, you're just sitting here and you're just pushing it in until it's a nice kind of sandy mixture. You can see once it starts really getting worked in, there's the irregular pieces of butter, but most are the size of say like a vegetable, like a pea or smaller. So you want some irregularity, but you want them all to be a little bit on the smaller side. What I always check, 
is when I pick up a clump, it holds. Do you see how it holds, but then it just crumbles away? That's perfect. That means that butter is worked in really well, which is what we want. Because you want the butter to be worked in just the right amount, so when you put this in the oven, it gets some nice flaky layers. My mouth is watering because this is so good. So now that we're at this point, what we can do is start adding our water. Now this is where it can be a little bit of a difference. Sometimes depending where you live, the humidity can change this. So I always start with my base amount, which you'll see in the recipe and I put it in and then I mix it up and then you add a little bit more water as needed. Now you're going to say, how do you know if you need it? You'll know. So what we're going to do is mix in that first bit of water and I'm just tossing it together, which you can see, pretty quickly the feel of it is very different. I'm starting to get more moist flour bits in here and you can see it's even clumping differently. And what I do again is that test where I pick it up, hold it, and it see how it's holding together better? It doesn't just crumble as much, but I can tell it's still crumbling enough that I'm going to add a little bit more. Now I think what we do is we get scared about water and pie crust because we've all been told, oh don't add too much water, but you need to add enough. So don't let it scare you. Add the water mix it together and as I'm doing this already I can tell that's going to be perfect this time. So what I like to do now is just start pushing it into a cohesive mass. Now you can do this in plastic wrap, whatever kind of wrap you want to or you can do it kind of right in the bowl. You don't need to knead it, you just want to have a cohesive mass which you can see is forming together perfectly here. And when I have that mass I'll just take some wrap and I'm using plastic so you can see it. Usually I'll use a reusable and I'm just going to put it right on there. You can see how nicely it is. It's a beautiful dough and it works really well. So what we're going to do is just make it into a disc, which you can do kind of with the wrap. I think that helps a little bit to wrap it tightly, push it around and then form your disc with your hand because that's kind of the final thing you can do. The whole issue is you don't want to warm it up too much because that will make the butter start melting. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it cold, work it together into a nice disc. See how beautiful this is becoming? And you see, you see those pockets of cheese, which I like. So I'm going to put this back into the fridge now. Let it chill for a little bit. We're going to finish the filling. The chicken is fully cooked. Take the temperature, check it, don't guess. Make sure it's browned all the way through. What I am going to do now is add a little bit of white wine. Now if you don't like wine, if you don't drink wine, you can leave it out. But this does add a layer of flavor. It has a little bit of an acidity to it. And it really creates a little bit more of a complex flavor when you're done. So when you're eating it, you're like, what is that? And I like to let it cook off a bit just so it leaves that acidity. What we're going to do is let that cook and just finish up here the herbs. I have some thyme and then I have some nice big leaves of sage. Sage and chicken work so well together. And you can see I just pile them up and I am just going to do kind of a light chiffonade on them. Just roll them up. You can do this with basil too. With a sharp knife then you can just kind of slice through those. And then you can go smaller if you want the other way. It just is a quicker way to make sure. But you can see, look how quickly and beautifully. And they have such a good fragrance to them. That sage and that thyme work together in such a harmonious way. So what I'm checking is just to make sure that we're starting to cook off some of that wine. So you see some of that liquid in there, but honestly, it's starting to cook down now quite a bit. And that's what you want. You want that wine to be cooked off so you don't have just that pungency of the wine, but are left with the really nice flavor. So I'm going to add these herbs right in. I'm going to just scoop them up, put them right in here. Look how beautiful that is. It adds color, but that's instantly adding flavor too, which is what we really want. And it smells, oh, it smells so good. And you can see really quickly here, it looks a lot drier. It's exactly what we want. We want most of that wine gone, it to be kind of thick what's left in there so we can add our flour. So this is going to make a roux. And what that means is we're going to tighten it up just enough. So when you're having something like a pot pie, you need to let it be a thicker filling so it holds together. And at first when we put the flour on, we want to stir it around for a bit and really cook the flour so it doesn't have a raw flour flavor, but instead it's just going to work as that thickening power that we want. And it's going to become pasty. That's very normal. Do you see how it's even creating somewhat of a paste on the bottom of the pan? Don't let that scare you. That's going to be what you need to do because when you're cooking this flour, you're cooking out the raw flavor, but you're also giving it the proponent to activate when we're going to add now our stock, which is going to thicken it. Now, I always, if I'm using like a bouillon or using like some type of stock you mix up, I do it in a salad shaker like you would dressing because I think it's so much easier to shake it up and add it than have to try to stir it in. So then what you can do is start adding your stock. And I usually add a little bit at a time just so it works in and is a little bit easier to stir. 
but do you see how it instantly then works in with that flour to start creating like a sauce? And you can see even when it's simmering around the edges, it's a thicker simmer because that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna add all this, we're gonna let it simmer. We're ready to assemble. This came to a simmer and cooked just until it was thick, which now we can finish up with our peas. Now, they're frozen peas, I let them thaw. They don't need to cook anymore, so we're gonna add those right in. And pearl onions, which I just think are a nice touch. I like pearl onions. And again, let them thaw. I get frozen pearl onions. I'm not gonna go through and peel them all. And let this just work in, and instantly, that's going to warm the peas and the onions. That's all you need to do. Look how, like, it's perfect. It's beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is actually just put it right into our pie dish. You can do it in any dish. It just, I like the pie dish because it's what it is. So we're gonna put it right in here and look how perfect that is, how thick it is. And it's obviously fully cooked now, but we're gonna finish it in the oven with that pastry topping. So what I'm doing is making sure to get it all in there. I mean, you don't wanna skimp on this. You wanna get it all out because it's all good and you don't wanna waste. So we're gonna just spread it out evenly. Look how beautiful. That is, that's absolutely perfect and hearty and wonderful for winter here. So for the crust, it was sitting in the fridge for a little bit resting, 20 minutes, should be good. Take a little bit of flour and we're just gonna roll it out like we would a pie crust of any sort. So I'm gonna open it up and this is what I love when you do a good homemade crust. You see those bits of butter in there, that's what I want. I wanna see the pockets of butter, I wanna see it all together. That just to me is exactly what you want. Now to me, the important thing is always keep a crust moving. So I like to do a little bit of a roll and turn, roll and turn. It's always probably about a quarter of a turn because what that does is make sure it's never sticking and it keeps it so it has a better shape. If you want a round shape, continually turn it. <laughs> so you're continually rolling it out and keeping a better shape. Will it be perfect? No. Is life perfect? No. But we can get as close as we can, right? So I like to do it so it's a nice thick crust. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this super simple. We're gonna put it right over the top. See how simple that is? Roll it slightly. And I just like to cut it right there at that whatever dish you're using and let it just stay there. That's all we're doing here. Now, the important thing, a couple vent holes though. I'm gonna do just a couple, nothing fancy. This just makes sure that you can let that steam escape inside. We're gonna do it just like mom always did it. She always did two like that. We're just gonna finish this off. This just makes sure that it looks a little bit more even and it doesn't just kind of melt off in the oven. So you can clean it up if you need to. Come around, perfect. Look at that, it's so nice. See, this is easier than double crust. So we're gonna put it on a parchment lined baking sheet. I would call that essential, just in case it bubbles. We have our vent holes cut in. We're gonna take a little bit of a beaten egg and we're gonna brush it on just for a better glossy finish, that's all that is. It looks nice, it gives it a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a glisten before it goes in. And look how it's gonna work with that cheese to be that beautiful color. So we're gonna put this right in. You don't want the pie crust to melt. We're gonna let it bake until it's nice and golden brown. Let it cool slightly and then enjoy. You can see when it comes out, it gets that beautiful golden brown on top, help with that egg wash. Really what you're doing is cooking that crust all the way through, making sure everything's hot underneath, but it was already cooked. So you're just finishing it off in the oven. And I let it sit for a few minutes because one, if something's thick and it's hot, it's gonna be more runny, but also you're just gonna burn yourself. But this is the beautiful part. Now you can see actually the parchment, not too much, a little bit of dripping from the butter but nothing too bad. So this is, instead of cutting, we are just going to scoop because that's what you wanna do. So I'm gonna make a nice big scoop here and get some of that filling, some of this crust. But look at this beautiful, oh, this is perfect. Look at that, look at that. It's just the right amount of thick, which is what you want. As it cools, it can even thicken more, but look at this, that's beautiful. And if you look down in here, it's just beautiful also. You get that perfect viscosity to it. It's, this is just a cozy, wonderful meal. What I like is since that pastry's on top, it's easier to serve, but it also doesn't get soggy ever, even after it sits, and that's the wonderful part. So what we're gonna do is just go through and make sure it tastes good. It's so good. It's so cozy, I wanna keep eating. It's so cozy and wonderful, what I really love, that savory crust with some cheese in it, some thyme, works so well 
with the beautiful kind of aroma of all those flavors we put into the bottom. So we have thyme and sage. We have the chicken thighs, which have more flavor. We also built it with a little bit of wine that you don't notice here at the end, but there's just layers in there. Beautiful, rich, beautiful filling, and that's what you want. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you're inspired to make something at home that maybe you haven't made. Maybe try something new for you. Try something that maybe usually you only buy because you think, well, that's the easiest way to do it. Guess what? You can now do it at home. It can be better, it can be more flavor, and you will have made it. So share it around with friends, share this video around with friends so other people can make it too. Check my website, wiseguy.com, where you can get this full recipe and all my other recipes, so hopefully you keep being inspired.